Hey, what's up everyone, Ollie here. So a new video today going through my favorite productivity apps for the Mac. So let's get into it. The first one is Notion. So Notion, I've mentioned before, it's basically an app that helps you organize your life. I feel like that's the best way to sort of explain it. I use it a lot for personal stuff, but also use it for work as well. It's great for to-do lists, links to sort of project files, branding guidelines, and all that sort of related stuff. I will have a more in-depth video on Notion and how I use it and the templates that I recommend checking out. So make sure to be subscribed for that. Spark, so this is my main mail app that I use to manage the array of email accounts that I have. I have way too many, but yeah, I love them clean and minimal design of it. And it also has very useful gestures and sort of email management. You can use gestures to sort of quickly archive things, delete things, mark things for spam, whatever else it may be. You can also do things like snooze emails so you can be reminded of them later on. Clean My Mac X, thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Clean My Mac X is an all-in-one cleaning and optimizing software for your Mac. We have a lot of Mac cleaners nowadays, so what makes Clean My Mac X so special? Clean My Mac X is one package that combines the most useful features for your Mac. It gives your system a scan to detect outdated junk files and also lets you see what exactly is taking up valuable space by building a virtual map of your Mac storage. It has a direct and straightforward UI that definitely makes the app stand out and it's clear what every feature is meant to do. You'll get step-by-step -step explanations on every tweak Clean My Mac X does on your Mac. Clean My Mac X's menu will keep you updated on the amount of free space on your Mac, CPU load, RAM memory available and other essential details. The menu is beautifully designed and gives you a sneak peek at your Mac system. You can download Clean My Mac X by checking out the link in the description. Figma and Sketch. So these two apps pretty much do exactly the same thing. They help you basically design websites, UI designs, icons, and things like that. The difference between Figma and Sketch is that Figma is cross-platform and it works in the browser and Sketch is native to the Mac. I personally prefer Sketch mainly because it's native to the Mac. I feel like the design of it is more adapted to the Mac. A few of you asked what I use to design the icons in my icon pack. I use Sketch, but again, you can use Figma if you like. They both can do exactly the same thing. These are my main two apps that I use to design websites for clients. And the reason I use both of them is because some clients have different requirements. So yeah, it's just good to know both. They're both really easy to pick up. They have tons of documentation, tons of tutorials. I highly recommend checking them out if you're interested in learning how to design. Lightroom, this is what I use to edit all of my photos. I pretty much use Lightroom exclusively now. I used to use apps like Visco and stuff on my phone but now I pretty much use Lightroom. I find it much more powerful and because it syncs all of my photos to the cloud and between all of my devices, it's just useful to have all of my photos in one place. If you're interested in getting the same sort of look that I get on my images, make sure to check out my preset pack. I'll leave it linked in the description. Amphetamine, now it does sound like a bit of a drug of course, but it's not, it's a little app for your Mac that basically just keeps it awake. So it's very useful if you don't want your Mac to go to sleep, you can set sort of timers for how long it stays awake and you can also set triggers. So for example, you can set it to trigger on when you have a specific app launched on your Mac so it doesn't go to sleep. Transmit, so this is my main FTP app that I use to manage my websites and things like that. And one of my favorite features of it is the sync feature where if you make edits on your local desktop or you make edits on your server, you can sync them and it will only transfer the files that have been recently changed. So yeah, incredibly useful if you don't want to transfer every single file and only want to transfer the files that have actually been changed. Mountain Duck. So this little app basically mounts a server as a disk in your file explorer or your finder on your Mac. So for example, if you have an Amazon S3 account, you can mount your Amazon S3 server onto your file explorer and have access to it whenever you like. And it's just like having a USB drive plugged in to your computer. I actually use it to manage a lot of my YouTube content because I don't want my YouTube videos and things like that to take up storage on my Mac. So I just put them on the cloud server and I leave them there. And it's even quick enough where you can edit content right off the server itself. So yeah, very useful if you wanna save storage in a Mac and have everything sitting in the cloud. Atom, so this is my current code editor. I was using Visual Studio Code before, but hey, they pretty much do all the same things. I just keep switching between them. I don't even know why, but yeah, they just all do the same thing. Choose whichever code editor you like. I personally just am using Atom right now. CodeKit, so this is a great tool for anyone who's into web development and is looking for a language compiler with a great interface. I absolutely love this app and it's a huge time saver for me because I don't have to mess around with setting up all sorts of compilers. I can just use this to compile everything. It helps me compile things like my SCSS files. It optimizes images for me. It also has an awesome auto browser refresh feature that can work across multiple devices on the same network. So you can have it set up on your phone, have it set up on your tablet and your computer 
better and make sure that your website looks great across all of them. Local, so I still do quite a bit of WordPress development. My own website is actually based on WordPress. And when I want to make any changes or anything like that, I need a server on my Mac so that I can see any changes. And this is what local does. It helps you set up your own local WordPress development sort of server on your Mac. And yeah, just a neat little app, very useful, better than MAMP, I think. I think MAMP has more functionality, but because I'm just looking for a simple server setup, I use local. Better Touch Tool, a really powerful app that lets you customize controls on your Mac. So for example, I have a shortcut set up where when I double tap on the top of my magic mouse on any link in a browser, it will automatically open that link in a new tab. So I don't have to do command click to open a new link in a new tab. It also has a ton of other features, including window snapping, where you can quickly snap windows to the left or right, whatever else you want. I've been using it for nearly 10 years now, highly recommend it. Sky fonts. So if you use Google web fonts a lot, like I do when it comes to design and web development and things like that, sky fonts lets you basically sync Google web fonts, browse for Google web fonts, add complete families, things like that. Very useful if you're someone who loves messing around with Google web fonts. Dropbox. I think everyone knows what Dropbox is by now, but yeah, it's my choice when it comes to cloud storage. One password. So this is my password manager of choice. One of the main reasons why I use it is, was because it was just the first one that I started using. It does help that it has a great interface that it checks for any sort of compromised accounts and things like that. And it also syncs across devices. So yeah, that's just the one I use, but there are tons of other password managers out there, but one password is just the one that I use right now. Pocket. Now this isn't actually necessarily just for the Mac. This can also work in Windows. It's more of a browser extension slash website. And it's just a great way for you to save anything for later. So you can save any website, whatever else it may be, save it for reference, organize them into collections. I find it very useful to save things like tutorials, videos, things like that, that I just want to come back to later on. Numi, so I've mentioned this app before. It's one of my favorites. I always recommend it. It's basically a very minimal, very super minimal, but very powerful calculator app. I use it a lot for currency conversions, adding up things quickly, finding the percentage of things, whatever else it may be. It's just a very useful calculator app. So yeah, those are just some of my favorite productivity apps that I use for the Mac. Thanks to Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check them out. I'll leave a link to them down in the description below. Let me know what your favorite apps are in the comments below. I'm always on the lookout for new and interesting apps. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.